Ulnar nerve, anatomy, pain, and block. As usual, we'll get started with some relevant anatomy. So this is an overview of how the ulnar nerve cross from the axilla all the way down to the hand in the medial aspect. So the ulnar nerve originates from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. It descend in the subcutaneous plane initially medial to the brachial artery to emerge behind the medial epicondyle that seats the nerve so here you see the ulnar nerve medial to the brachial artery and if you are looking from medial to lateral, you will notice the basilic vein, the most medial, followed by the ulnar, followed by the brachial artery, and just next to that, the median nerve. The transformation of the medial and lateral cord into their terminal branches is M-shaped, laying over the anterior aspect of the axillary artery. So that's the M shape, if you wish. The lateral leg of the letter M is the musculocutaneous nerve. The medial leg is the ulnar nerve. The center or the V-shaped convergence is the lateral and medial cord merging to become the median nerve. In the proximal arm, or in the proximal upper arm, the ulnar nerve lies on the anterior border of the intermuscular septum. Once piercing the intermuscular septum, the ulnar nerve becomes enveloped in the anterior medial aspect of the medial head of the triceps. So that's the uh, medial head. Of the triceps. So this is an uh, axillary uh, uh, coronary uh, coronal cut here. So here you notice how the basilic vein and ulnar nerve running together. So in the arm, in the arm, the basilic vein is your friend to feel, to find the ulnar nerve. Remember, the brachial artery was going with the median nerve. They are very close at this uh, point. And if you look here, anterior, you have the biceps brachii. And the posterior, you have the, tri uh, the triceps. This is all the triceps with the three head. And more anterior, medial, you have the... Uh, you have the brachialis. So just going slightly lower at the uh, above the elbow here, you notice that the medial, the ulnar nerve, uh, become really superficial here. But under the fascia, this is how you differentiate it from the from the medial uh, antibrachial cutaneous branch, and still close to the basilic uh, vein. And this is, of course, the trapezius muscle. Uh, so it is just within the fascia of the trapezius muscle at this point. So at the elbow, after exiting the postcondylar groove, which is a groove in this area here, the ulnar nerve travels through the cubital tunnel. The ulnar nerve enters the anterior flexor compartment of the forearm between the humeral between the humeral and ulnar heads of the flexor carbi ulnaris and at this level it be, uh, it will give you the aponeurosis as you see here which is also called Osborne fascia 
In about 75% of the population, the superficial aponeurosis between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris is very thick and called the Osborne uh, fascia or the Osborne uh, band. So if you notice here, that's the aponeurosis here. This is a, a straight elbow. And see how the nerve look like while when, when you start uh, flexing the elbow, see how the aponeurosis squeeze the ulnar nerve. So the amount of aponeurosis covering the postcondylar groove as well as the space between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris is variable. In fact, some patient may not have this covering at all, allowing the ulnar nerve to slip or snap over the medial epicondyle during forearm flexion. The cubital tunnel volume decreases, as I showed you here, with elbow flexion. Furthermore, contraction of the flexor carpi ulnaris causes the submuscularis portion of the cubital tunnel to be to also constrict. This is uh, one of the ways how we examine for cubital tunnel syndrome. So this is why simultaneous elbow flexion and wrist flexion in an ulnar direction can precipitate symptoms of the ulnar entrapment at the elbow. Um, about 10%, there is, an, an, uh, there is an, uh, a muscle uh, in this area. Uh, this muscle span from the medial epicondyle to the olecranion and uh, is a potential cause for uh, ulnar nerve irritation. So what's the cubital tunnel then? So the cubital tunnel is formed the ceiling by the Osborne uh, ligament here and here, um, which is the cubital uh, retinaculum, which is a ligament between the medial epicondyle and the olecranian pr process, and it's the connection between the humeral and ulnar, ulnar head of the flexor carpi ulnaris. And in some patient, as I sh showed you the previous slide, um, this can be replaced by this uh, uh, aconeus muscle. So the floor is made up uh, by the medial collateral ligament and elbow joint capsule, the medial wall by the medial epicondyle, and the lateral wall by the olecranium. So that's the cubital tunnel. Going further down in the forearm, the ulnar nerve in the upper third of the forearm uh, uh, slightly separated from the ulnar artery, as you see here. But more distally, it comes to uh, uh, very adjacent to the uh, medial side of the artery. Uh, cross section view here show you um, at the mid forearm where is the ulnar nerve running with the artery. And as you notice, just uh, the muscle above is the flexor uh, digitorum superficialis, um, uh, more anterior, and, and from anterior uh, medial, you get the, the flexor carpi ulnaris, and underneath them, you get the flexor digitorum profundus. So notice here that's the, uh, the median nerve and what's important that at this level the median nerve and the inner nerve is at the same facial plane between these muscles. So if you are planning to block the inner nerve here, uh, you, don't know, you don't need uh, too much volume to spill to the median nerve and you block it. Uh, going farther down at the distal forearm, you see how superficial and just underneath the flexor carpi ulnaris, you see the ulnar nerve and artery. So this is all the way down to the wrist. This is called the um, 
the Guyans uh, tunnel and the Guyan the Guyans tunnel uh, floor is formed by the transversus carpal ligament and the roof is formed by the palmar carpal uh, ligament and it also still running with the um, with the artery with the ulnar artery so the ulnar nerve give you uh, quite a few branches but if you notice um, in the axilla and in the arm there is no major branches just close to the elbow you get a small elbow uh, branches to supply the elbow joint in the forearm you get most of the branches to uh, supply the flexors muscle and then it uh, and and continue branching once it reaches to the to the wrist and the hand to give you the thenier group intrinsic group and hypothenior group okay so how ulnar nerve pain present and or ulnar nerve neuralgia uh, to refresh your memory the um, the ulnar nerve is motor to all intrinsic muscle of the hand except the three thenier muscle and two lateral uh, lubricals also uh, flexor carbi annalis and the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus in the forearm sensory um, it gives you sensation over the medial half of the palm the palmar cutaneous branch as you see in uh, this more detailed picture, the dorsal surface of the medial one and the half finger with the dorsal cutaneous branch and the palmar surface of the medial one and half fingers with the superficial branch. So, uh, clinical presentation for uh, ulnar nerve injury and, and block, um, you can get decreased flexion and abduction and uh, and uh, adduction of the ulnar fingers, loose of sensation over the ulnar uh, one and a half fingers, that's more classic. And for more for uh, chronic injury, you get the ulnar uh, claw, uh, claw hand and, 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 and you can get a uh, fromance sign, which I will so show you in a minute. Um, However, as you imagine, the level of the block or the injury is important. So if, if your injury um, at the level of the elbow and above, then the hand will deviate to the radial side during flexion of the wrist. So you can get that classic ulnar uh, claw and from inside. And this is an ulnar claw hand. Um, so these uh, this is how it looks like. You have a hyper extension of the metacarpal phalangeal joint in the um, in the fourth and fifth digit, as you see here. And um, how, what can cause uh, ulnar nerve injury or neuropathy? So as I used to divide them uh, in the arm, anticubital fossa and forearm, I, I highlighted the anticubital fossa because most of the injury at this level here. So at the arm, um, in the axilla, it can be secondary to any kind of trauma or pressure pulses like uh, poorly fitted crutches, uh, display supracondylar fracture surgery uh, or fracture or surgery, and you get the arcade of uh, struthers, which I showed you which is about eight centimeter proximal to the elbow. Um, this arcade of struthers, in fact, does not cause primary ulnar nerve compression. Instead, it presents, its presence may predispose some ulnar nerve uh, transpositions at the elbow to fail. The arcade of uh, struthers, when present and not transected, during the original transposition surgery may tether the relocated ulnar nerve, which lead to compression and continuous symptoms. At the anticubital fossa, we, we get the ulnar nerve entrapment at the elbow or the cubital tunnel syndrome. 
not necessarily all the ulnar nerve entrapment at the elbow in the cubital tunnel so, uh, for, uh, in the cubital tunnel but the most common cause is the cubital tunnel um, syndrome which is a compression of the ulnar nerve by an aponeurotic band that runs from the medial epicondyle to the humerus to the medial border of the uh, olecranion or sometimes you can get a direct trauma there or uh, uh, repetitive elbow motion in people who do a lot of weight lifting and uh, muscle building. So this syndrome also known as uh, tardy ulnar palsy and remember you have to differentiate it from the golfer's elbow or the medial epicondylitis. Um, another common cause, especially in the perioperative setting post-surgery, is poor elbow positioning during surgery. Uh, another common cause uh, for post-surgical injury, elbow arthroscopy and arthroplasty. At the forearm, you can uh, get the nerve uh, irritated or injured by ulnar fracture and surgery. And uh, uh, very rarely you can get the uh, anomaly, the flexor pronator fascia. So how the carpal tunnel syndrome present? Usual pain and paresthesia in the lateral forearm that radiate to the wrist and to the ring and little uh, uh, fingers. Patient vulnerable to nerve syndrome, usually people with diabetes, alcoholic patient, are greater risk of development of ulnar nerve entrapment and neuropathy. So usually um, the symptoms begin after repetitive elbow motion or repetitive pressure on the elbow, such as leaning on elbow while, uh, while um, laying on the floor, as you see here. So uh, in examination, you might get a positive tunnel sign uh, while you are pressing over the ulnar nerve as it passes uh, underneath the aponeurosis. And you may get also the Froman sign. So the Froman sign can be uh, elicited by asking the patient to grasp a piece of paper lightly between the thumb and index finger of each hand and monitor flexion of the thumb interphalangeal joint on the affected side and that's the classic sign right here instead of the normal side right here and you can get also something called the wartenberg sign remember the wartenberg syndrome from the radial nerve lecture so the wartenberg sign a patient with significant muscle weakness may exhibit a positive uh, sign with patient often complaining that the little finger gets caught outside the pants pocket when they reach for a car key. And also another way to test this is the little finger adduction uh, test. So you ask the patient to um, that to evaluate the strength in the interosseous muscle of the hand that innervated by NRF. So you ask the patient to touch his or her little finger to the index finger, and they can't basically. So uh, just a, a quick uh, important signs here, you get the peace sign that's for the ulnar nerve. So again, it's resistant. And I hope you remember from the previous lectures, the thumb up for, for the radial nerve the power to people and okay sign for the median nerve. And this is the sensory for ulnar in comparison to other hand nerves. So how we block the ulnar nerve? Starting from the axilla. So this is the axillary artery and you find the ulnar nerve uh, in the posterior aspect, just superior. Uh, not like the radial nerve, uh, just underneath it here. And then you find the, the veins. So remember uh, the, the ulnar nerve in relation to the axillary artery, most likely at two o'clock. But however, in about 
you can get the inner nerve fused with the radial nerve at this uh, at this point at the axilla. Now starting to go slightly lower, you still see the axillary uh, vein and artery here before it becomes the brachial artery, and you notice the ulnar nerve and median nerve. Uh, going farther uh, down here, now you start to see the brachial artery instead of the axillary artery, and you see the basilic vein. So the basilic vein uh, is the friend for the ulnar nerve, and remember the brachial artery with the uh, median nerve. So about this level here, um, you... Uh, notice the brachial artery relation, and that's again the basilic vein compressed with compression, and with it the ulnar uh, uh, nerve. And you notice here the, the triceps and the coracobrachialis uh, more uh, anterior lateral. So if you uh, if you start to go farther down, this is about middle third of the arm, uh, the nerve start to go to the posterior compartment of the arm. So at this level here, you see how superficial the ulnar nerve is still very close to a uh, basilic vein. And you can also appreciate the median nerve and, uh, um, and the brachial artery. And if you look, uh, this is the trapezius muscle and this is the brachialis and you here you can see part of the biceps brachii. So at this level here we're going farther down so you are about this level and here uh, it's about 8 centimeter proximal to the medial epicondyle, you can see the arcade of struthers, which is one of the potential sites for nerve entrapment. So the arcade of struthers, you can appreciate it here, just above the ulnar nerve. And you see the trapezius, so everything trapezius here. Uh, and then more uh, lateral, you have the brachialis. So all of this again trapezius and the arcade of struthers as I showed you uh, it's about eight centimeter proximal to the medial epicondyle. Um, here we are getting close to the uh, to the inner groove um, in the uh, medial epicondyle so that's the medial epicondyle and you can appreciate the ulnar nerve. So every time you miss the ulnar nerve and you are scanning, just feel the medial epicondyle, put your ultrasound just above it and scan up. So two, two frames for you in the arm. The medial epicondyle start up and the uh, basilic uh, V. So here uh, we went inside uh, so that's in the uh, cubital tunnel. So you appreciate the olecranion. Uh, at this level, you see the ulnar nerve and you start to see the flexor muscles and part of the pronator teres. So here, again, inside the carpal tunnel. So at this level here, yeah, sorry, inside the cubital tunnel. Um, so you see the ulnar nerve passing deep to the uh, Osborne arcade. So that's the Osborne arcade here, uh, which again bridge the humeral and the ulnar head. So we are now inside the cubital uh, tunnel. And that's the, that's the olecranion here. That's the medial epicondyle, and that's the, and that's the humeral and the ulnar head of the flexor carbi ulnaris. So this is the 
Obstern uh, Arcade. And here, uh, just, just a little bit more uh, distal at the level of the tubercle of the coracoid process. So this is the coracoid process. So you notice how the nerve become elliptical in shape, elliptical in shape. And farther down here, we pass the cubital tunnel. We still underneath the flexor carbi ulnaris. And now your friend will be the ulnar artery. So once you find the ulnar artery, the ulnar nerve is close to it all the way down. So here another uh, view at uh, this level, and you can appreciate the flexor carbi ulnaris. Now it become tendon. That's flexor carbi ulnaris, and you can also appreciate the uh, flexor digitorum uh, uh, muscle here, and also the pronator. Uh, quadratus, the pronator quadratus at almost this level here above the wrist and you can see the ulnar artery uh, the ulnar nerve and veins <coughs> going with it. Now going uh, farther down you also can see the ulnar nerve and artery underneath the flexor carbi ulnaris and also as I told you the tendon here. So that's what I have for you. Thank you for watching. I hope you find it uh, 